Hello, this is Marion Penna coming to you from SeemsToBeSo.com. Today I'm covering the third part in my series on working with the fabric libraries in Electric Quill. Last week we discussed how to work with the older fabric libraries from the DUEQ site from Electric Quilt where you can download the older .fab files for your libraries and how to create a folder that you can make of your own and then bring link the folder to your EQ library and then add the .fab files to it as you download more of them. One of the um, cool features about that video is that when you work in your own libraries in Electric Quilt in the My EQ section of the software. You have your normal library, and this is where all of the libraries are installed that you download from Electric Quilt, or if you purchase the stash CDs or the online stash that they now offer where you can download the fabrics. If you've created um, if you've downloaded the fab files from Connecting Threads and even the softwares that they've had as add-ons always have some kind of fabrics in them that are added to the software as well. And these are always going to be found in the EQ libraries section of the fabric libraries. There's also my library which covers um, anything that I add to the software by importing it into the software. We're copying it from the other library or my sketchbook to my library. So anything I add, what happens is when EQ, when we make our own libraries here, they are stored in our user folder here. So as you can see here, I have a lot of fab files. I have some BLK files. The, the BLK files are my projects that I've worked on that are stored in the library. So this is anything like if you have pictures that you add to the photos section, the photos library, that's going to be here as well. So anything that you create in EQ, even layouts for the quilt layout, are always going to be in the user folder and that's because this is something you've created and stored it in a library. Okay, this is a pretty cool thing about Electric Quilt and if they just get too big or you want to kind of move or remove a library but you don't want to delete it, you can just make a folder in your user folder and move them on in to those folders and Electric Quilt won't pick those up. So that's kind of a, a, a handy little tip to share with you. But I did want to point that out because sometimes, like I say, I will make libraries and then I'll want to, you know, kind of move them out for a little while. They may be too old or I may not be using them anymore or maybe they're a released pattern that it had a certain palette to go with it that's the idea of having those folders and I move them on into the to the older to the other folders and that's why I do that because like I say electric quilt does get to a point where it's too it might be too full or it's a little sluggish and you'll want to keep that in mind for the times that that happens because it will happen if you continuously add and add and add without ever cleaning anything out. So let's go back to our, our libraries here. So today's subject is really going to be about how to work with fabric libraries, or I'm sorry, not fabric libraries, images that you can download from fabric websites that will allow you to download the images of their collections so that you can add them to Electric Quilt yourself. So 
let's just let's just go to a website and download some fabric. I'm just going to go to Northcott's because Northcott Northcott makes it really easy for you to download their images. So you just click on the picture or the collection and hopefully it will take you to the <laughs> page. And this is a nice collection. It's nice and small, so the download won't take very long. They make it really easy. They say download fabrics for EQ and you click on that button. And this is how every page at Northcott looks and the button is always right here in this area. So they make it very easy for you to find those. This is already downloaded, so we will go ahead and close that now. And let's go to where it downloaded to. Here it is right here. So I always have a little look in my zip file. I see that it has a Mac OS folder, but there's no folder for it. So if I unzip it, it's going to unzip to all this folder here and I won't like that because I want the name of this this collection that's kind of it's to me it's kind of important I don't know how it would be to you but to me it's important so I'm going to obviously select this and then unzip it and extract it to its own folder Okay, so here it's unzipped. When I open it, I have these five folders. I'm going to delete the Mac folder because it's just something I don't need. It's like I say I'm on a desktop. So next we're going to go to Electric Quilt. We're going to go to our fabric library. I want my library. And then I'm pretty sure I have a Northcott folder here. I might not anymore. I'm, you know, I'm thinking I might have moved it or something like that. So we're going to add a library. We're going to call this Northcott, and I'm just going to reduce this on down to like five for now, which gives me five folders. If I'd left it at ten, it I it would, it's it would have ten style numbers instead but I just want to I'm not going to do a whole lot here tonight so I'm just going to leave it small so the next thing I need to do is I want to import the images so I go to import from image files if I wanted to do, to do it from a project it's basically the same procedure but you're picking the project file, the PJ7 file instead. Okay, so let's see, I want to go to my C drive, to my downloads, to my images, and to this folder that I made. Hmm, oh, there it is. Okay. So I can, I can select all of these by doing control A on my keyboard, or I can highlight one, select it, and press a shift key and grab them all. Or if I just wanted to select a few of them by just holding my control key down and then selecting the ones I want, I can just select those. In this case, I'm going to select them all and I'm going to add them. And you want to click open and it will take a moment now the one thing I probably should have mentioned here is that these are probably large files let's have a look yes they're very large <laughs> this is where you want to really think about this first I, I want to reduce these real quick because they're just a little too large so I'm going to go to convert image and I'm going to bring them down in size because see even the file size very very large for electrical that it, it, it's massive so 
I'm going to bring these down to a size of um, what's considered in my, my software as large and that should bring them down to about 100 KB or so maybe not it, it, it does depend on the oops well, I don't want to do that one again do I so I want these for now so I'm going to reduce all and that will take in pixels for me. And I'm going to delete these because I do not need these. I already have them in a zip file, still right here. So I have the zip file, I'm not worried about that. And so I can now go ahead and import these and feel fairly secure. And while the file size is still a little large, I'm okay with it. Okay, so I want to go to my library. I want to import from image files. I'm going to choose these five, and this should be a little bit faster. Yeah, let's see, this is much faster. Okay, so there's something you have to remember when you import files into, a, into Electric Quilt. You're going to be on the Import Results tab of the library. And these are just temporarily here. The next time I come back to this window, these files will no longer show. So you want to be sure you do your actions on this window before you leave it. So if I were to just go to my library now, these would no longer be here when I come back to this window. So you want to take, and you can either cut or you can copy. I'm going to copy my library and then I'm going to put them here I'm going to paste them in this was called the amethyst collection so I'm going to name this amethyst now some people like to leave the style number in it, it doesn't really matter so much to me but you know sometimes I'll come and I'll I will do this as well because I know the 01 means it's style 01 and um, electric quilt, I, I don't know what it is, but like when you go to delete one of these style things, if you have something that's like zero um, amethyst and then all of a sudden the next one down is like burgundy or something like that and continues on, when you go to delete the library, it's deleting the, the library that's last in line. So like if you have five styles and they're all filled up and you want to delete style number two, you can't. It's going to delete off style number five when you do that. So you want to keep that in mind if you have to delete something down the road. So you click OK and they are now there. You want to save yeah. your library. And if you save your library at this point, you only have one click. But if you go and change the libraries, say if I, I go to Marion's Patterns or something else, then you'll have two because it will ask you if you want to save it. And then it will want you to confirm that you want to save it. So try to save it right after you do something. So if we come back now, oh, well, that's weird because he used to disappear on me. So this is very strange. Now maybe if I, if, I do, if I cut or something like that, maybe they would go away. They And they do, so. But they're just kind of there, see if I paste their back, so. They used to disappear, and maybe that's because I just copied and didn't cut, I don't know. But you do want to be careful about that. And just be sure that you don't leave the window. Let's see, import results. They are gone now, so you do want to be sure that you at least don't close your window or that kind of thing. Okay, so now that we've added these to our library, as you can see, they're still here, and EQ remembers what library I was last in, will remember it for your session of EQ. 
but the next time you come back to EQ, I'm not sure if it will remember or not. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but most of the time mine opens up to the very first library that's in Electric Quilt. So um, I can't tell you if it always remembers or not. Okay, so you've now added these libraries. Maybe you want to take a look at them. So let's go ahead and add these to Sketchbook and just have a little playtime. So we'll go over here to the block library and we'll make a new block. It doesn't matter what you choose. I work in the motif tab most of the time. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to go to the blocks, the squares, and this is only available on the motif tab. I think it's on um, Easy Draw and Patch Draw also, but you only get the shapes on the applique tab. So once you have your shape drawn, you can then take and duplicate. You know you need five of these. So what you're trying to do here is determine how they look when they're going to be placed in squares. Now this is not so important for fabrics that you download at a, at a fabric manufacturer, but if you download them from a store, like um, the Fat Quarter Shop, you know, where you just save the image as, or like from eBay, if you bought a fabric and you want to save it in a queue, if you save the image from eBay, then this is where it's going to become more important because some of the things you need to know about this are um, really important, especially in scanned fabrics and in, in fabrics that you scan into your software. You want to, there are some things you have to be aware of and it's the same with when you take a picture, if you just, you, you know, use your digital camera. And I'll discuss that here in a few minutes. But I, I just wanted to quickly show you how these will look. And you do want to check. It's important to check because, oops, you want to see how they're going to look in the box. And the reason for this is we're looking for repeats or something that may not show up that doesn't look well. Um, I think, let me find my libraries that I've added that are personal libraries of my own fabric. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I have found two of them. When you scan fabrics in particular, these are scanned fabrics that I brought into the software. You can end up with things like this. And this is because I didn't do a proper cropping before I put the image in. All I did was import the image itself and I didn't crop it first in the image editor of Electric Quilt. So I'm going to show you how these look in um, the software. So we'll just go over like this. As you can see, they don't look too bad. You can actually see the fabric print, but what you're seeing here too is the repeat. The repeat is very obvious in, in this. As you can see here, it gets cut off from the picture and it just repeats itself because, I, and I'm not sure, it could be just because of how I added the print to the software. But it's also obvious over here, as you can see. So these are things you should watch out for when you do that. and. I will discuss that more with image editing in a future lesson, either next week or the week after. So at the moment, I, I need to pause. So the thing you want to remember is that while they can look really awful up here in, I'm sorry, in your library, it, you, they will add OK. To the picture. This one is this one obviously here and this one is this one here. And as you can see it's the same over here. They still look awful but when you put them in you at least get to see what they were. So while you can't tell what it is here you can tell when you come and test it out here. And that's why I say 
Testing is a good thing because you'll get to see how it's repeating in the square. As you can see with the Northcott fabrics, we don't have that problem or that issue because they are already set. They know how they know how to do this so that the cropping is well done for the repeat. And when you put it in the square, you're not getting the repeat as often. And I think I, I remember reading something about this on um, Bee's blog at beaquilter.com. She did, she did a tutorial on adding your own fabrics to electric quilt. And if I remember right, she talked about making sure that the image was 800 by 800. When you are scanning a fabric, you know, you've only got that little teeny tiny screen. So even though it'll scan to about 3000 by 3000 or so pixels, that doesn't mean that you're getting that wide of an image. It's only just creating that image in that size so it can give you the best quality possible. So it's only scanning what it sees on the actual screen. So that's why you want to try and get as much as your fabric in as possible. And if your repeat is not close together, let's say your repeat is every 24 inches, then you're better off trying to find a really good picture on the web that will give you what you need instead and you can just take and add it into electric quilt and still get what you want. When they're blenders, you don't really have to worry so much with blenders because the repeat doesn't show up as pronounced as it does with these two fabrics here. One of the things I want to point out with, with when you're doing image saves on stores or eBay or wherever you have purchased your fabric online, you want to watch out for the kind of image that's laying flat on the ground, you know, or has a very angled appearance. When you bring that into electric quilt, you have to remember that you're going to have that repeat. So maybe you have software where you can bring that angle and edit it so that the image is more straight looking. I have um, Corel Paint Shop Pro, and when I have this kind of image, I will take and I will re-angle the picture in there first so it stands more straight. But you don't always have that option. If you don't have that software, for instance, you wouldn't. But, but if Paint Shop Pro does it, I'm sure that Corel Draw does it, and Inkscape probably does it um, in some manner or other as well as Adobe Photoshop and any really good um, image software, image editing software like these softwares are, image creation softwares would have this, would have that option because it's dealing with photos. It's a, it's a common problem with photos. So um, you want to keep that in mind with fabrics that are laying on an angle or are angled in their appearance. You can make them so that they're standing up, but you do lose part of that background image also where it will turn black. So make sure you're encompassing your entire image when you do that. There, there are tutorials and lessons on the web on how to do that as well. Other watch out fours are things like this. This would be a problem if you're bringing this image into electric quilt because the shop, and I'm not putting the back quarter shop down at all because I wouldn't, I, I, I like the shop and I shop there. So the, one of the things I do when I buy from the, the, fat, the fat quarter shop is I will right click and I'll, I will save my image. But the next thing I will do is I label the image with the name of the fabric and the company, the um, name of the fabric itself, how much I paid, and then the yardage I bought. And then what I'll do is I'll select the fabric and I will just kind of do this where I can copy it. I copy the title 
I don't copy anything else but the title and the name and then I'll open my search engine and I will see what I can come up with. Now as you can see the first photos I see here are from the Fat Quarter shop. But let's try this instead and see what happens. I'm still getting the same thing. So let's see if we can find this. We want to try and find the fabric, the same fabric that is not at the back quarter shop. It's a ballet print. It's got to be other places. But as you can see, you're going down Google and we're not seeing the fabric. Now this looks somewhat close. But the, the fabric is such a dark color that it's hard to believe that it would be. So let's go back to our search engine and see if maybe we can find this at another place where they don't label the fabric in the same manner. Um, Maybe we can do this. See if we can find it. Oh, there we go. See? Right here. This is pretty close, wouldn't you say? Yeah, see, I, I would say that that's pretty much the same one. So let's go to this this place. See if they give us a large image of it. They don't. See, and that's not cool. We need to have a large image. So let's try. I just don't think that's the same one. It's not like you can't find them, it's just sometimes it's really difficult to find them. Isn't this the same size? Well, that's not too bad. Let's have a look at that size. Okay, it comes up at... I'm writing this down a bit. It comes up at a size of 600 by 598. That's pretty good. So, then I could bring this image into Electric Quilts. I could take it over to my back quarter and rename it and it's going to add a little one on it to the old file name and that's how I know that that was the original or the, or the new one I'm sorry that's how I know it's the new one and this is the original I don't want this in my EQ library that the logo just is not going to work for me if I'm going to use it in a project and I'm going to have that back quarter shop logo on every little piece and I don't want to see that so that's the only reason why I go after a different one but I do this with all my fabrics because it helps me to know how much I paid and how much I bought and how much um, I have of it so it's a nice way to be able to just check real fast on what I what I have I don't put all my inventory in electric quilt. I just don't have the time to do it. But it's helpful when I do need something like working on um, Oh Holy Night. Almost all my fabrics that I used are in electric quilt. Little Treasures has almost, as I added, like the flesh fabric and the background fabrics are there, as is with Sun Bonnet Sue. But that's the those are the only ones because I can pretty much electric quilt pretty much has everything I need and I really do depend on electric quilt to just do all my fabric for me 
versus my doing it because it can be time consuming but especially where it's something that you purchased on the web or if you're scanning your own fabrics in that's just very time consuming it's different when it's from a, a manufacturer's website so I hope I've given you some things to look for um, next week we'll talk about the image editing a little bit and I'll show you how to crop in the meantime, I'll put the link to B's um, tutorial on this post at my blog, and I'll also list all the manufacturers I know of that carry zipped files of the, their fabric collections for you to download. So, I hope that you will give this lesson a try, and let me know how it goes for you, or how you felt about it. Maybe you'll try to scan fabric and see. Um, I will also note the pages at Electric Quilt where they also discuss about image editing and adding scanned fabrics and that kind of thing so that you get a full idea because the scanned fabrics is not easy. It, it is difficult and especially trying not to get a repeat. So um, we'll talk about that next week and then we'll talk about working, make it, making your own palettes in electric quilt. I hope you have a great week and I will see you soon. Bye bye for now.